Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. We're here in a tropical paradise. I'm surrounded by the most amazing flowers and I can't wait to share them with you all. They're from Greenpoint Nurseries on the Big Island. So they were flown in specially for us. They got here yesterday. But I wanted to share with you last week. So I know most of you were with me last week and I wanted you to remember. Think back to the hand tie, the spiral with the tulips. This is seven days later. You know, people say, oh, tulips don't last. I'm thinking they lasted pretty beautiful. Reminder, housekeeping, if you're on your phone, turn it sideways, that way you can get a bigger picture. If you're on your computer, go full screen. If you're on your TV, I'm larger than life. If you haven't invited your friends to join you in a watch party, do so now. Let's get a crowd started. We have so many fun things to share. Of course, I hope you have your beverage of choice. I'm still working and it's before five o'clock, so I'm going to stick with my coffee. I know day drinking is sort of the thing now as we're all working from home and we have odd schedules. Just even getting dressed is challenging but I think it's probably not a good habit to get into. So I'm staying focused on my coffee, making sure that I have a little bit of a schedule in my world. Today, like I said, we're talking tropicals. So let's move this out of the way. You saw the tulips, you know that they lasted an entire week and they just went drapey. Look how that foliage is up. These were all from Oregon flowers. Last week they had shared their bounty with us. And I just wanted to show you how it's continued to hold so incredibly well. This week, Greenpoint Nurseries. Beautiful, beautiful flowers. The Midori Anthurium. Isn't that grand? That lovely pistachio green. They're so long lasting. You may have seen in the Instagram story our flower ninjas with the beehive ginger. It comes in a couple of different colors. You can see the bloom coming out here. That's how it flowers out. Don't you love it? I hope you turned your heat up today. Maybe you're in a short sleeve or a sleeveless shirt. Maybe you really got to the tropic theme and you're wearing a swimsuit. I mean, what the heck? You're at home? Let's get into the spirit. Think about being in paradise, in the island. You have the leaves waving in the breeze. Can you feel the breeze? Can you feel it? That's a raphis palm. Ah, that's a palm, a rafa palm. Thank you. Look how great that is. When they sent us things, we didn't really know what we were going to get. I just said, pick your most wonderful treasures and surprise me. And I think they did. We've got some Obaki Anthurium with the variegation. Isn't that grand? That one is actually Is that a tulip or which one is this that, one called? That is an Obaki and that variety is Tropic Sun Sunrise. Tropic Sunrise. No, wait, no, that's the wrong one. That's the other one. I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> that one's Pink Butterfly. That Pink one Butterfly, <laughs> Tropic Sunrise. I know it's so tricky. They sent so many wonderful things. Don't you love it? If you love it, tap your screen so that we know. Put some hearts in there. Show some love. Because I know I love it. I'm very excited about it. And Leanne, I also learned that um, actually Obaki anthuriums are typically bicolor. Aren't they always bicolor that's and variegated like that? That's okay. what they told me today. <laughs> well, and they are the experts. I mean, Greenpoint has been in the family for generations, and they really know how to grow and pack and sell their flowers. So I've found over the years, every time that I order from them, I have my wish list, but then when I talk to them, I say, what do you have that's super fabulous? And then I let them adjust because they know what is just stunning in the farm at that moment. Heliconias and the orange. I'm going to do something fun with those in this orange vase. Don't you think that'll be grand? Pretty much fabulous. Yeah. And then more. That one is, oh, you're going to love this. It's Maui Bride. Maui Bride. 
It looks perfect for a wedding with that soft pastel. You know, so many of us and you and the world out there had weddings canceled, postponed, rescheduled. And what I'm finding is it's starting back up again, but very, very small quarantine weddings, elopements, so to speak. And tropicals like this are perfect for that because you can get such exquisite placement and color and it's long lasting. How grand. Got one more I have to show you that I just think is too amazing. Look at the Oncidium. They're so huge, so vivid yellow. Look how full and fabulous. Do you love it? I just, these were like liquid sunshine, flower sunshine. They just make me so happy. Oh, this is just too, too wonderful. Then, of course, flax and Dracaena and Monstera and this foliage. Marisa, you're going to have to refresh my mind. I yes. love this curlicue. It is so gorgeous. What is that? Well, I, let me just go back to those Oncidiums really quick because those are actually considered small, Leanne. These are small? Yes. No way. Yes. <laughs> okay, maybe small in the island is a different word than I'm used to because these look like Oh my gosh, these are fabulous. They're not small. So isn't that great? Yeah. Pink now, does amazing. That foliage, um, I unfortunately forgot to ask how to pronounce it, but the common name for that is Green Wave, but it's also called Curly Luau, L-A-U-A-E. Okay, we're going to call it Curly Wave because we can say that. <laughs> what do you think? Do you like it? So many fun things. We're going to have to get started designing here. Now, You've got your part to do. Make sure and let us know that you're here. Introduce yourself to the rest of the tribe because as always, this is a collaboration. I get to share the flowers. Greenpoint gets to show you what fabulous things they have. But it's all about you. So take a moment, introduce yourself, let people know where you're from. If you're part of the Tulip tribe, put your tulip in there so that we know. And I want to say a shout out and a thank you to the tribe because we've had so many new students joining us in this last couple of weeks. Lots and lots of people that are studying from home because they're in quarantine and so they're using this time to really try to prepare for their next career and their future and to learn something new. So they've been doing a lot of their lessons right now and I've been doing the Welcome to Flower School announcements and many of you in the tribe have taken the time to go to the Floral Design Institute page and say welcome and greet them. And I want to say thank you to you for that because it makes everybody feel special. We all love to be recognized and we love to be welcomed. So a shout out to you in the tribe that is making that effort because it means a lot and I do so appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and put some heliconia in here, leaving it pretty long because I can. Doing it foam free, I've got floral netting on the inside with fresh water in there. And then setting it down, letting it get into the water. While I start designing in the studio with me, Miss Carolyn and Marisa, they're all masked up. They're 10 feet apart, making sure that we all stay safe. But they are monitoring Facebook and YouTube so that they can verbalize to me your questions and your comments. So if you have questions, type it in there. They'll get it out to me. And then with us remotely, we have Caledonia and Susie who are both online in YouTube and Facebook to greet you and to help answer questions and add in links as we need. So thank you for being here. What's going on out there? Well, I first want to do a shout out to, uh, let's see, Leslie, who's saying, who's saying that she is signing up for school right now. Leslie, I can't wait to welcome you to flower school. And the tribe will be welcoming you too. I'm so glad you're doing that. It's the perfect time because we're isolated, we're trapped, or we're sheltering in place with flowers. I think that's a pretty cool thing. How tall do I want this one? I think I'll do it right about there. 
And I think that's pretty wonderful. I think it's a great way to use your time. And flowers are available. Students are reporting in that they are able to get flowers. Greenpoint is shipping without any issues whatsoever. You can go online, say, I need this, this, this. Floor Abundance is shipping. 50 Flowers is shipping. Local wholesalers are starting to open. You can find things at your grocery store now. You can find some things at the flowers floor shop. Um, so yes, flowers are available. What That's else is going on out there? We've got quite the crew on uh, YouTube. We have Janet, Visual One, Christian, Alexine, Tiziana, Vicki, Veronica, Derek, Elaine, Jan, Greg, Tess, Garrett, Christina, Debbie, and Sue. And they come from Italy, Philippines, Hong Kong, California, Sweden, and Canada. Did I put it all in? <laughs> Deep breath. Okay, you guys, keep these girls working. The women's are trying to keep up with you and it sounds like you guys are giving them a run to their money run for their money so good job okay, that makes me happy then. okay on let's see facebook. what have you got there okay on facebook we have wayne david lisa karen vega beatrice dippy therese kathleen teacher shell sharon Lori, tammy gala vicky april heather renee molly who turned off the ac because uh, it's 90 degrees in phoenix and then <laughs> penny and maggie Jennifer, who's local, who plugged in her heating blanket, and Brooke and Banji and Gina. And we have people from Alaska, Idaho, Canada, Michigan, Pennsylvania, a couple from Italy, and Ireland. How Ooh. grand. So <laughs> some of you are naturally hot, and you actually had to turn on the air conditioning. Some of you are freezing cold, and some of us are kind of in the middle. But let's pretend we're in the tropics. Get hot. Get yourself a wonderful beverage. Maybe turn on some Don Home music. You can play tiny bubbles in the background. And we can all pretend that we've gone to the islands because we have beautiful flowers that you would find there. And isn't it grand? Sometimes we need these virtual escapes, the virtual vacation, so that we can survive our lives. Because it is kind of a challenging time right now. I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know, that's for sure. I want to move this one a little bit, and one trick that you may know is that you can manipulate them by just kind of running your fingers along them, getting a nice curvature to the stem. doesn't shorten the life, but it gives them a little more movement, and that way I can get some dimension going on here. There we go. So what would you like to know about tropicals? What questions do you have? Marisa, have you got anything there? I do. Um, Arthur wants to know if you ever work with plumeria. Oh, how funny that you say that. Plumeria is not usually commercially available, but I did a wedding in Mexico maybe three years ago, four years ago. It's been a while. And I flew in to do the wedding right after there had been a horrible hurricane and storms. So there were no flowers. And I ended up having to use just local foraged things. And since there had been a storm, things had blown down. It was just, it was amazing. And I ended up doing an entire wedding out of not much but plumeria. It was beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. So yes, I've used them a little, but not commercially. That was just a wonderful little adventure for me. Yeah. So I've got some of the Obaki Antherium. I've got Heliconia, two Monstera. Maybe I'll go back and add a bit more here. Adding some vertical movement, carrying the green upward. That's one of the things that's nice about Greenpoint is they've had the foliages and the flowers both so that you can get a nice assortment. What else is going on? Okay, Lynn has a really good question. Do you use flower food with tropicals? I do. I, as a habit, use flower food with everything. And so that's my question to the rest of you in the tribe. Do you? Do you find that flower food makes a difference? I like it because it keeps the water clearer, keeps it from getting bacteria. Um, Tropicals are so long lasting to begin with, it maybe isn't vital, but I think it's a benefit to it, just keeping the water clean. Marisa, what have you got? Okay, so that material that you are putting in there is actually a bamboo orchid, and it actually is an orchid. Oh, really? Yes. I did not know that. I knew it was a bamboo, but a bamboo orchid. Yes. So it does bloom. However, uh, when I asked them, say, like, when does it bloom, they said, 
It kind of just blooms whenever it wants. So it's a free bloomer. A free bloomer. I love it. Is that like a free bird? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So that's a bamboo orchid. So you know, I think that's one of the things I love about ordering a surprise package is I learn things because I get things that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise that I wasn't familiar with. As I'm pulling things, what else is going on? Okay, I'm getting um, a couple people are asking the same question. How do you properly store these types of flowers in a cooler? Great question because tropicals like a warmer environment and you really can't put them in a flower cooler. They really should be above 55 degrees and your flower cooler should be below 55 degrees. So some people, when they do a lot of tropicals, will actually have two coolers. One for tropical flowers that's at a higher temperature and one for their other flowers at the lower temperature. So you really can't put this in a flower cooler. You want to bring them in and if you don't have a warm cooler, just keep them at room temperature and make sure and sell them quickly. Get them out to your customers. Don't store them because you want them to be out where the people can enjoy them. So um, yeah, great question. So no flower coolers. Carolyn, what do you have going on? I have another really great question about Karen Handling. What temperature of water would you use when processing tropicals? That is another good question. You know, what temperature of the water and such? The science now is to use cold water on most everything. You shouldn't be using warm water any longer. They feel that the flowers will last better done with cooler water. I wouldn't do frigid cold. Don't want to shock them to death, but room temperature to warmer, eh, cool. But you want cool water. Isn't that interesting? Because all these years we taught warm water, and now we've discovered that it actually is better to do cool water and that things will last better. I'm just having so much fun putting flowers in here because they're so beautiful. Um, you know, I feel like a kid in a candy store. So I've got heliconia, bamboo orchid. Oncidium, Monstera, and Obachianthurium. What do you think? Do you like it? I'm hiding behind it. I love this because it just is so exciting, so grand, and easy to work with. The one thing I find um, is that people are looking for exotic, they're looking for interesting, they're looking for something that surprises them and tropical flowers are the perfect thing for that. So maybe you want, for Mother's Day, having tropicals. You can mix them with other flowers. They don't have to be all by themselves. This I did with all tropical because I could. But tropicals actually pair well with other flowers. They don't have to be kept all by themselves. And they obviously make a statement, and they're long-lasting. Now, one thing that will make them last even longer is make sure you spray them down with your crowning glory. So when you make your arrangements, totally spray down and saturate. It will lock the moisture into their faces and they'll last so much longer. So I'm gonna set this one aside. If you love it, let me know, tap your screen, say, hey, Greenpoint, we like that. And while I move it, anything else going on out there? Yes, yeah, so Wayne has a very great question. Would you use quick dip on any of these tropicals? I probably would not. I don't think that it would hurt it, but I don't think it's a necessity. So I'm going to set it here where you can see it with the plain backdrop. Do you like that? I love it. It makes me so happy to have flowers that are so wonderful and so long lasting. We'll get pictures of these again so that you can see. Some of you were following along with the tulip bouquets, watching them grow from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I showed it to you today a week later. Um, but we'll take pictures of these as well. They won't continue to grow, but they're gonna hold very, very well. So I'll move that one aside. Elizabeth calls that one juicy. Juicy, there we go. It is a juicy, juicy arrangement, I agree. And I see a few more tulips out there. I see Harmony and Cindy and Lisa, Linda, Karen, Jim, Arena, Lisa, and Pam. Hi there. Glad you're here. Talk amongst yourself as well. Get to know each other. This is your chance to connect with your tribe and to really share creative inspiration, a little bit of support. 
We all need each other. Right now, it's scary times. We feel so isolated and alone that it's time when we have these opportunities to virtually connect that can really make the day better. And it allows each of us to know we're not alone, that we are loved, and that we have people that care about us. So reach out and give a little love and hug to each other. Hugs from afar, you know, just give a hug to yourself and then dream it to somebody else because we all need that. I've got um, a fun one here that Marisa and Carolyn staged everything for me today, so I just kind of showed up to have some fun. But they put this one out. It is a wonderful dish filled with shells. Can you see that? And then a little bit of the midnight foam from the Oasis. So it just disappears in there. And then they had the one starfish over here in that more dyed to that pinkish color. And I thought, well, how cool is that? Because it works perfectly. Leanne, do you happen to know the answer to this? Um, if Heliconia and Bird of Paradise are in the same family? Yes, they are. They are related. They're probably second cousins. I don't know. But yes, um, Bird of Paradise and Heliconia, I believe, are related. So um, they're not the same, but they're cousins, maybe. What do you think? You like those? And they go well with the starfish down here. So I thought, well, yeah, we'll do something fun with that. And looking at their faces, determining how I want them to work together, and then placing them in. We have Candy that says hi to you and says she can't wait to come here and meet you. Candy, I look forward to that opportunity. You know, we have visitors here frequently, and I love it when you stop by and visit. And we all love to kind of do a show and tell. Right now, everything's closed. We don't allow anybody in at the moment as we're practicing isolation. But someday, you'll be back, and you'll be able to come, and we'll all get together. And I look forward to that chance to get to meet you and to welcome you to Flower School here in Portland. Carolyn, what you got? Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out to Amanda. It's her first live today. Amanda, welcome to live. Everybody, shout out to Amanda. Give her some love. We love first timers. We love to have everybody here with us. It's such an important time. So what's going on in your world? What has happened to you this week? Anybody have good things happening? Something that we were very excited? I saw several of you were delivering flowers for Administrative Assistance Day, and it was a tricky delivery time because with offices closed, people are actually delivering to the homes, and then, since they aren't used to having those flowers delivered at home, we discovered that many people had not updated their addresses with their employers, and so people were out trying to deliver and they weren't there and oh, it was just a mess for Floris. But I'm pretty excited that you were able to deliver because we all need that. We need to be able to get out and have our flowers out with people. So what has happened for you? What good things occurred this week? I know we all hear about the negatives, but let's think about what's the positives. This is Ulahi Fern Curls. Aren't they beautiful? They have a great color. They pick up the black and kind of bring it up and through. Doing this almost in a vegetative manner as it would grow in groupings. Adding in. Mm -hmm. Yep, go ahead. Oh, Re uh, Renee and Beatrice say the anthuriums remind them of watermelon. That is a watermelon hue. I would have to agree. It does look like watermelon in that color. Oh, and shout out to John. On the 24th is going to be um, his, first year, his first year anniversary as a floral designer. Congratulations, John. You made it for the first year. I bet you never thought you'd be a florist in isolation. That's kind of been the challenge for all of us. I was just looking, um, Joseph, who is a graduate of ours, who's also on our board of advisors, celebrating his 10th anniversary. He was in flower school 10 years ago, and now his flower shop is doing so well. I'm so proud of him, and he's surviving the isolation, and he is able to do deliveries with no contact 
all the way, things that are supposed to be happening, and he is doing it. So congratulations to him, and congratulations, John. That's pretty great. And Lori actually has been quite busy today. 18 administrative day bouquets today. 18. Wow. That is so wonderful. I am so proud of you. I know people were afraid, were we even going to be able to do anything for administrative assistant? But I've talked to so many people that Easter was hugely fabulous. Admin is doing well. And now we're getting ready for Mother's Day. I know Friday, that's what I'll be talking about in my chat from the house is preparing for Mother's Day and what that means. And can you deliver? Should you deliver? I know that Greenpoint is available for shipping things out for Mother's Day. You can get it all there without any problem. So we've got lots of choices. I think I'm going to set this one aside. I just wanted to keep it very simple and just show you how even three flowers and three fern curls and just two leaves all of a sudden starts looking kind of fun. So you can start exploring what you might have in your flower shop or in your house and just pick a couple fabulous blooms and you've got a fun arrangement. Pretty nice. What do you think? Do you like that one? That doing okay? We'll set it over here. I've got a couple positives. Um, Nancy is still working, and then Gina, um, they were able to reopen for deliveries and curbside pickup. Oh, grand. You know, Gina has done a really good job with her social media, keeping her flowers and her flower shop in front of everybody. I am proud of what you've accomplished, because I know it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. Uh, and so I'm glad that you're able to do curbside pickup and no contact delivery. Yeah. What else have you guys got? I have got? a positive. Dottie says their stay-at-home um, orders are being lifted. Oh, wow. Congratulations, Dottie. Now, okay, because for many of us, things are being lifted. They're getting a little bit looser about it, but be so careful. Be very slow. Make sure you're wearing your mask. Make sure that you are desanitizing everything and, and decontaminating because we certainly don't want to start this over again. I would love to think we're on the flip side and the only way we can do that is if we really keep practicing safe practices. Wear your mask, wear your gloves, keep clean, wash your hands, use soap and water all the time and that way we can be there. What other positives are going on? Um, so Maggie says, I love this, um, her husband has been trimming bushes in the yard and he brought them to her and said, I have, uh, I would save you from foraging and thought you could use these in your arrangements. So she's been making arrangements and leaving them at her neighbors. That's great. You know, this is the perfect time to go for a walk, keep your distance and look and see what's blooming, what's there. I grabbed some lilies. You may remember these from last week. This was Oregon Flowers Lilies. And one of the things that I love about tropicals is that they really do play well with other flowers. So these, we had to wait a whole week for them to get open and ready. Tropicals, they come to you open and ready. They're set. So they're a good pairing. So I'm going to go ahead and just put some of the lilies in this dish. So it is a trifle bowl. I don't make trifles, so I use it for flowers. Filled it with floral netting, wrapped foliage on the inside, and then just placing this down in. I've already removed the lily pollen because I don't want it to stain. It would stain the other flowers. It would stain its own petals. It would stain whatever fabric. This bloom doesn't look real happy, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut, cut him out. It's like he got shut in the cooler door maybe or something, I'm not positive, but. He doesn't look really thrilled, so I'm just going to set these in. There we go, making sure that it's going to stay. So mixing the tropical blooms with temperate blooms gives you just a totally different design. And they do pair so well. And these lilies are very fragrant, so they're going to make the whole arrangement smell fabulous. So I just keep setting them in. Making sure I have the pollen removed. Don't want that. And I'm gonna go back and tuck some a little bit lower. I want them to draw your eye into the center. Okay, I have a great one here. 
great question from Tatiana. She wants to know, um, oh, where did her question go? Uh, how we got the lilies to open so big? You know, the Oregon flowers, lilies, just do this. All you do is put them in water with flower food and wait. And they are always huge and fabulous like this. Some of you saw their flowers at our retreat that we did this last summer. And they had amazing lilies that we were using. And they just opened and then held for such a long time. It was overwhelming how grand it was. Now I've got those placed in. I'm going to go back and add in a little bit of foliage. While I'm doing that, anything else going on that I should be aware of? Matthew has a great question. He's asking, do you have any tips on making lilies open faster? You know, I've heard so many tricks, um, and things that I've heard is put them in warm water, then um, take like a big plastic bag over the top so that you're making a hothouse effect. And then the other thing that I've had people tell me, and I've not, I've not had success with this. I haven't found it to make a difference, but I have found it didn't hurt anything. But they say if you take the pollen nodules, so I just pulled these out, if you take the pollen nodules and put that in the bucket of water with them, that it seems to let off more ethylene, which then allows them to open more fully, more rapidly. Um, so I don't know, that may be true, I'm not positive. Who can identify this leaf? Don't tell them, Marisa or Carolyn. Who knows what leaf this is? Came from Greenpoint, so there's your clue. It is a tropical. Anybody have a clue? We'll give you a second before I tell you. I'm gonna set them in here, getting a little bit of that foliage. Carolyn? Um, a popular question, several people are asking, can you mix tropicals with bulb flowers or other flowers? I think that tropicals pair well with anything. Um, for weddings, tropicals and garden roses are spectacular. For Mother's Day, tropicals and lilies, look at this. I mean, how cool is this? I could mix in with tulips, um, so many different things. And the beauty with the tropicals is they're so long lasting that it makes the whole arrangement seem like it's even more long lasting. So these lilies are gonna give the fragrance. It's really an olfactory delight right now. And then I can go back and add this anthurium over the top. Look at that color, how it blends together. What do you think? Do you like that? Oh, it is so gorgeous. All right, we have answers. Okay, what's our answer? Okay, for the most part, we got anthurium. Okay, you are correct. It is an anthurium leaf. So that was the question. What is this leaf? And it's an anthurium leaf, so it would be growing with a you know, little plant like so. And so I thought, how perfect to put anthurium leaves with my anthurium in this design. And you can see that tropicals do pair well with other flowers. So, you know, when I first started, we were told you couldn't mix a tropical with something else. You were supposed to just keep them all by themselves. And now we know that tropicals play well with other flowers. I'm going to keep poking some more flowers in here. What else is going on while I do that? Uh, just a shout out so everybody knows, Chris from Greenpoint is actually watching right now. Hi Chris, glad you're here. Thanks for these amazing flowers. So anybody that has a question for Chris, feel free to type it in there because he would be the person that knows, has the knowledge um, firsthand. So I know we were talking with Kelly and she was helping us make sure that we had everything that we need. And then Marisa called and you know, double checked on things, made sure that we had the right names and such. Uh, and you can just see how beautiful everything is. And they're so service oriented. They wanna make sure that the flowers are exactly what you want and that you get exactly what you need and you have the knowledge to take care of them. You can see, I'm going to spin it around so you can see it from all sides while I'm spinning. Any other thoughts or questions? Yes, I have a question from Tammy, and I think she asked this question last week. 
So you did the arrangement with the lily grass inside, and we had someone asking if you could also put a leaf inside, and what kind of leaf do you have inside that vase? So yes, you can put hard foliages into your vases. You don't want to do a soft foliage. So lily grass works, and therium leaves would work. I used aspidistra in this one. Actually, it's not. It's oh, a, it, it's their tea leaf. It is the tea leaf. Yes, it is. Okay, silly me. So this is a tea leaf direct from Greenpoint as well. And green, um, the tea leaves are very leathery and firm, so you can work with them in there without any problem. So yes, putting hard foliage in the water is fine. You don't want soft foliage in the water. You want to be able to do that. Now, those of you that have taken classes with us, you knew that um, in advanced soil design, we do a whole segment on tropical flowers and knowing how to take care of them, how to store them, how to design, working with them, and then pairing them with temperate flowers or keeping them by themselves. Now, doing it on a live shows you how versatile they are. You, know, you might not think of doing a round centerpiece with tropicals. You might think of being linear, but look how well they can go into that more feminine rounded form. Perfect for Mother's Day. What else do I want to put in here? I've got so much fun stuff going on here. Now here is the tea leaves. So this is the leaf that's on the inside. So it's just been rolled around on the inside and it's going to hold just totally fine without any problem. So this has tea leaves and anthurium leaves, lilies, and then anthurium. And I think we we'll go ahead and put a little more interesting foliage in here just because we can, because it's so beautiful. We've got the bamboo orchid. This will be nice in there with that softer green. Those of you in the tulip tribe, if you get a chance, make sure and touch base with the first timers. Make sure they feel welcome. If you are watching for the first time, let us know so that we can say hello, make you feel good. If you know somebody who should be watching and see how to design with tropical blooms, share this video. Spread the word. Let's get as many people as possible on here with us seeing how to design with these gorgeous flowers. I've got a couple more I'm going to be playing with here. But you can see how easy it is to design with these. I think that's one of the things that I have learned. If you've got beautiful flowers, it's easy to make beautiful things. And with the Greenpoint Nurseries, they're beautiful. Yeah. The other benefit right now is we're all trying to figure out how to get flowers and what to do is they deliver them just straight to your doorstep. So it's contact-free delivery. You can on, go online and order them. You can call them and talk to them. But you place your order and then it shows up at your doorstep so that you have flowers so that you can then take care of your clients and it's ready to go. It makes it very easy. What else is going on? So, excuse me, so Nancy actually just pointed out something very important. Um, although this arrangement is gorgeous, lilies are actually quite um, toxic to cats. Her cat actually got very sick. Oh, that is true. So many of the materials, you have to be careful whether it's dogs or cats or children. Um, lilies can be toxic to animals, so you want to be a little cautious on things like that. Um, I don't have a cat. So this might be perfect at my house because it sure would be lovely. It's so fragrant. What do you think? So there's my kind of a question for you. We did interesting colors of going to the pinks and the greens, the complementary colors. And then we did the juicy design with the analogous, the more expected with oranges and yellows. Which do you prefer? Do you have a preference? Do you prefer the oranges or do you prefer the pinks? You know, sometimes we forget that tropical flowers can be so many different ways. So what do you think? Which one do you like the best? I'll let you guys vote on that. There's not a right or a wrong. It's just, it is. 
And I'm going to move things around because I've got more flowers to play with. I can't believe it. I just feel like, I don't know how I'm going to deal with all this stuff. There's so much cool things. Shout out to Kenya. It's uh, their first time viewing. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you joined us. I'm glad you found us. There's so much going on. Make sure you have a cup of coffee or a glass of wine or maybe you've got a Mai Tai because you're in paradise with us in this tropical frenzy of flowers. What do you think? Do you like these? I know I do. Carolyn, what you got? Yeah, and shout out to Faith. It's her first time watching and not only is it her first time, but she shared the video with a friend. Okay, Faith, thank you for sharing it. Each of you, tag a friend. Let them know this is going on. Tag a friend, spread it out, share, send the message of flowers out into the universe because we can. Yeah. Shout out to Malati, who is also a first time viewer. Welcome. I love this. So many first time. That's so great. So your first time is with tropicals. How cool is that? That's a pretty paradise time. Okay, Leanne, you are going to get a crack out of this. So we have um, a vote and one wins for sure. Well, actually, they both do. Everyone is picking both. Oh, they're picking both. Yes. <laughs> you can't do both. You gotta have one or the other. That's the same thing that's happening on YouTube. Everybody's saying both. Oh, I love it. That's too fun. I'll throw out my vote. My vote's for the orange one. <laughs> you want the orange one? I love it. I thought this one I would do with the Midori, the green. So I'm giving it a little bit of curvature. And I picked the blue vessel so that I have yet another color palette. Totally different. That's the beauty with tropical flowers is that there's such diversity that you can do any color. You can say, oh, it's masculine, oh, it's feminine, oh, it's for this, oh, it's for that. They just work for everyone. Uh, and I, I don't know that there's, that there's a bad way to do tropicals. I mean, they just are so perfect. So I've got that one kind of started out there, bringing in another one. So I'm just manipulating. Leanna, and a shout out to Tatiana, who is also a first timer. And her favorite is both as well. I love it. Well, Tatiana, welcome. I'm glad you're here. You know, what a privilege and honor to get to spend time with you all. I never dreamed when we started doing lives, that I would have so much fun each week just hanging out with you. And it is so much fun. So I've just got these perched here right now. I don't have any mechanics going on. I just am kind of starting myself with some movement here. Leanne. Yeah. Sandra says, well, she's just going to love the one you're doing now. <laughs> okay, Sandra, this one will be for you then. This is yours. And I have another Monstera and some fishtail palm. Look at that. Isn't that interesting? So gorgeous. All right, I have a shout out to two more first timers, Tiziana and Jerry. And Jerry is enjoying a glass of wine while she watches us. Well, Jerry, I'm going to have mine after we're done because I will enjoy that. I've been thinking, it's like, oh, I earned this. I earned this. But for now, I'll stick with my coffee and keep myself caffeinated. But yeah, we'll sit down with a glass of wine a little bit later. So as each of you are watching what I'm doing and thinking about things, I just want to make sure that you're taking care of yourself at the same time. You know, sometimes we think, oh, we need flowers, and then we think, oh, is it a necessity, and can we, and what's going on? And you know what? You need flowers. They are a necessity. And we are so, so lucky because growers have them in the fields, in the farms, in the greenhouses, and they can ship them to you. So take time and gather flowers. You know, don't give up. I know we've all been kind of afraid. Can we sell flowers? Can we deliver? What should we be doing? But you know what? You can. Check with your area. Find out what the restrictions are going to be. 
but prepare to go forward because Mother's Day is coming and we all want to have flowers available to send out to our clients and events will come back. Weddings are going on. Things are doing it a little different. Right now we're doing a lot of elopement weddings, very small gatherings, and then they're rescheduling to do the big wedding later. So they're doing two, one very small and intimate so they can go ahead and get married. I have a friend getting married on Friday. He had scheduled a huge wedding for this weekend. It's canceled, that's not happening. So Friday they're doing a very small elopement for themselves. And then next year they're going to come back and have their wedding. And a funny thing is one of our graduates was doing the flowers for them and I didn't know this, just by conversation found out that they had one of our graduates doing it and so she's doing the elopement on Friday and then she's already saved the date for them next year for when they do the party. So yeah, make sure you get some flowers. You need them. We all need them. Did you happen to see the surface quality on that foliage that you had before? I just, Ooh, yes. It looks almost like an alligator or okay. something. Oh, so I was going to say. Oh, should yeah. I not have said that? No, oh. it's very, very close. Okay. So I was going to see if maybe they can identify the... Can you guys figure it out? It's really grand. Look at that texture on there. The visual is so grand. So if you know what that is, put it in. And then I've got the palm that I'm going to manipulate. So I'm just pulling the fingers down. Cindy says you look like a kid in a candy store. I feel then, like a kid in a candy store. I have such a plethora of wonderful things here. It's just amazing. And then Donna responded to Cindy saying, very good. Which piece of candy should I choose? <laughs> I love it. I know. I've, I've been just kind of doing all of them. Okay. Sorry. Jennifer actually called it. She said crocodile something, and she is correct. Um, it's called crocodilus. Crocodilus. I love it. So that's this one. Crocodilus, and you can see it has like it's got that skin. How cool is that? So now I've just manipulated this by pulling the fingers down, creating basically a bow almost, then using a bit of bind wire, lashing it together. Oops, one popped out, get him back in there. And then twisting it all together. So I'm getting my pieces organized here. You like that? Kind of fun. And then the crocodilus. Have a great question from Lori. She wants to know how tropicals hold up in corsage work. Tropicals hold up fabulously. They make wonderful flowers to wear. You can do them in crowns, corsages, boutonnieres. They're so, so fabulous to work with. And for those of you that are in super hot climates, they hold really well. So you can actually use them without having a lot of issues. Look at that. I don't even, I don't even know where to begin with the flowers because I'm just having so much fun with the foliages. Look how great that is. Just the foliage in there is too fun. So I'm going to turn this one that direction. Then bringing in the flowers, Midori Anthurium. We have a lot of people saying that they just found that today tropicals are their favorite. I love it. So I'm glad you found us today because this has been a fun live. I want to do a shout out again to Greenpoint for being so kind to put together the surprise package for us. When they, um, when I was talking to them, they're like, well, what do we want? What to order? And I said, you know what? You know your product. You know what's fabulous. You surprise me. And they did. And all these things, look at that. I mean, how pretty. It's just so grand. And then come back maybe with one more of the Monstera under here. Where do I want him? make him be a shelf for everything else. And I'm just kind of clustering it in my hands and I'm going to go back and tie this off again. So we've got about 
Not quite 10 minutes. So what would you like to see? You see the flowers here. What else would you like? And what questions do you have? What other good things have gone on? Did we get more answers there of good things in people's lives? What happened this week? Well, Stacy actually has a really great comment. <clears throat> Excuse me. She said she's learned during this scary time that flowers are essential. Gotta have flowers. And that is so true. Flowers are essential. And especially now where we can't always be with our loved ones, we are not able to um, travel to see them. We may be in a lockdown where we can't get in and be around them. Flowers become more and more vital. And they're an expression of love. They're an expression of beauty and caring. And so as we all are going, how do I even exist? How do I continue on? What can I do? Flowers allow us to feel better and to share that love. I'm gonna tuck this in here now, carefully feeding it in. Okay, so I have a couple people mentioning about the, actually behind you is the honeycomb ginger, and they are saying, um, they've seen them very sappy, where today Kelly told me that it's the shampoo ginger that has the sappy. It's different from that one. Okay. And, you know, I've heard them called beehive ginger. I found, um, I was working with a contingent of florists from Mexico, and they call them maracas. And they look like a maraca. There's so many different varieties, but no, this one does not feel sappy at all. It seems to be just grand. Now this design then I kept much more muted, restful, relaxing, focusing on the green. And it goes all the way around. There's not a front or a back to this because each area that you look just looks a little bit different. And the vessel, has a little motif down here, so that could be a front, but they're all fronts. What do you think? Do you like that one? I know somebody said this was going to be their favorite. This is the muted. So we had the fire colors, we had the pinks, and now we've got the blues and greens together. So lots of different ways to work with the tropical blooms. They all work so well together, and they just make you happy. I know I like it. It makes me happy. So I have another positive here from Joe. Um, they were open for a professional administrative day. Um, they had a great day in the social media and advertising um, works and their tropicals were a hit. Excellent. So you use tropicals for the administrative assistance day. You guys remember this vessel from last week? I thought, let's do this one again just because it makes me remember the woman who gave it to us, and it makes me think about how many different ways you could use this. It has the holes, various sides, so you can design from any direction and have it be just a total different look. And I think maybe some of the white, they're so beautiful. I think those ones have Oh, a name. Oh, let's see if I can say it correctly. Haku <laughs> Hakuloa. H O K U L O A. <laughs> oh, wow. They are lovely. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, these could be fun to just go ahead and let them come out. Let's see if I can get it to secure here. This is going to be a tricky thing because I want it to be right here and I don't know that it's going to let me do that. So let's see what I can do here. Ha! Huh. It's going to stay there. That way that works. And then maybe another one coming in. Great has a Great question. I'm not sure if we can answer this for him, but Chris from uh, Greenpoint might be able to. What plant is the crocodilius leaf from? 
a crocodilius plant. I think that that works for me. I don't know. So Chris, if you have a, a botanical name for that, potentially, we could see what you have. And I don't know. I'm playing around with this to see if I can get it to stay put. It doesn't seem to want to. It's not loving me today. Let's see here. There we go. Got it back in. Now bringing this guy in. Sandra says she wants to be like you when she grows up. Oh, you know what? Some days I would trade you. You know, I am so lucky. But some days I feel like, oh my gosh, what is going on in my world? But you know, I am pretty lucky. I am blessed. And so thank you for saying that. And thank you for letting me be part of your life. Because I am quite the lucky girl. I mean, think about it, I get to sit and play with flowers. I think that's about as perfect a life as anybody could have. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see the other holes that I'm doing, I tucked it down on the inside. What do you think, do you like that? And then coming out to the sides here, just giving it a little bit of movement. The question is, do I want another one over here? And I think I do. Let's see. Could you use a frog or a Kenzon in there? I could, except I didn't give myself one, but I could do a pin cushion in there or a Kenzon, and then it would hold everything exactly where I placed it. But you know, part of the challenge is to force yourself to kind of go beyond your comfort zone. And that's why I chose to work with this today, because I knew it was gonna push me past my comfort and it would make me try something a little bit different. It would make me be brave. And I think that the way the world is now, every single one of us is discovering that we have more courage than we ever dreamed because we're doing things we never, ever, ever dreamed we would have to do. And it's scary. And sometimes if you take that fear and translate it into design and art, it helps you work through that. It helps you get past that fear and it reminds you that life has beauty and that there's beauty in this world and that we're all pretty lucky. It doesn't feel like it some days. Some days it feels pretty awful. But as a whole, we still think we're in a good world and we're in a good opportunity. And the fact that we can still get flowers, the fact that FedEx can pull up to your door and unload a box of flowers. I mean, how perfect is that? I think that's just sort of like the best thing ever. So yeah, I think we are pretty fortunate. Very, very fortunate. Leanne, Andrea has a cute little comment. She says she likes the little peek inside approach. I do too. I like to hide things sometimes just to make it go, hmm, what's in there? What's going on? We use one of these Ulahi stems, the fern curl stem. I'm just kind of manipulating it a bit. And I'm not even going to put it into the water. I'm just going to use it and let it wind around, very gently manipulating. But I don't want it to actually kink, so let's see. That one might not work so well. This one's a little bit softer, so it'll be easier. We had someone earlier ask if you ever do Ikebana influence designs. Would you say this could possibly be Ikebana influence? This would definitely be Ikebana influenced. You could say you've got heaven, man, and earth, and a little extra. But um, yeah, when you're dealing with Ikebana, you're talking about using your space and your line and minimal. So this would be more of an Ikebana influenced design. So I'm going to pull things back out here again so you can think about it and make a choice as to which are the favorites. Is it the vivid orange? That was so fun to do, it just made me happy. Somebody said it's called Juicy. We'll call this one meditation or purity with the white. We have purity. And then 
the monochromatic with the all green, totally different look, giving it just more of a soft feel to it. And then the pinks. Pairing the tropicals with the temperate blossoms because you can and it's okay to do that. So combining, and again, I buried myself behind everything, but how cool is that? Thank you to each of you for joining me. If you haven't shared this video out, please do. And a thank you to the tribe. So many of you, many of you have joined the Flower Lovers Club, supporting free education. And I would love you for that. Tag a friend, invite them to join us. Thank you to Greenpoint for providing so many amazing tropicals to work with. Friday, I'll be live from the house. It'll be a casual chat. We'll be talking again about Mother's Day and getting ready and what that means for the professional florist. So if you know someone who needs to have that chat, join me on Friday, 3 o'clock. And then we'll see you all next week. But get out there now. Have fun. Do it safely from a distance and do something you love.